So we're presently at the next stage of uh, an exciting part of the project where we are drawing the rail in that was previously delivered. The reason we're drawing these rail lengths into the tunnel now is an anticipation of the next phase where we're uh, preparing the track installations and the rail needs to be actually mobilised into the tunnel in advance of that. These are going to be drawn in in 165 metre lengths, two at a time. We've developed purpose-built um, trolleys. They've been used to be able to safely draw in uh, the lengths of rail through the tunnel so that we can then install them in the locations at the edge of the tunnel invert or rather at the, uh, the tunnel sides in anticipation of the track installation. So the tracks have been manufactured in 165 metre lengths. They were originally made in shelter lengths, but as part of our um, requirements and specifications associated with building Metro Tunnel Project, the rails have to be what we call continually welded. So the aim of having 165 metre lengths is to reduce the amount of actual welds that would be otherwise in the tunnel if we were doing it through normal welding. That's an advantage in terms of the performance of the overall rail system um, and also contributes to uh, reduced maintenance requirements going forward. So as a result of that, they've been um, what we call flash but welded, which is a fusing process of the rail together, and then were delivered into the decline in the western portal and in the eastern portal. Because of the size of them and being in 165 metre lens, it means that they're the only two locations where we can actually store them and then draw them into the tunnels. And the reason for that is, is at the end of the day, we're building Metro Tunnel Project in an existing city, existing city that's operating, and therefore it means that we've only got certain points of access to be able to bring that kind of equipment and that kind of material in. Hence the number of trolleys and them being drawn down through the tunnel and the long journeys that they've had down into the city from uh, South Kensington or from indeed from the Eastern Portal down into the city as well. So the rail's being drawn in from the west down to the city and then what will happen is we will build the railway out back towards the western portal over the course of the next uh, coming months. Similarly, the, the rails has been mobilised in the eastern portal at South Yarra. The rail will be drawn in from the eastern portal down to CBD and then that will be built outwards towards the eastern portal in a similar manner. Once the rail is drawn into the tunnels, we will start to build the next part of the track system. We've previously to date been installing the floating slab track, which was the first part of the track system. We're now moving into the second part of the track system, which is actually what we call the track form. It's effectively the same as what you would normally see on the open surface in terms of the sleepers and the ballast that's out there, but what we've got in Metro Tunnel Project is actually, that's all a precast concrete unit. And then what'll happen is we'll then take the rail that we've put in previously and we'll move that over and put it into the housings of the sleepers, if you like. It's tightened up and final alignment is done then in terms of um, the, the track alignment, the final track alignment. Once all of that's actually installed, then what we'll be doing is, is welding between the 165 metre lengths and bringing it all together as one entire railway from South Harrow to South Kensington. So the installation process is effectively a production line where we're actually um, installing the track form units as precast, we're then actually putting the rail over into the housings, we're clipping those up and the tolerances around that are incredibly tight so we're talking within you know, two to five millimetres in terms of where things have got to be placed because of the nature of what we've got with the, the gauge and the gauge profile, etc., to do with the train, how the train travels through, and the smoothness of the railway in terms of uh, what that looks like from a track geometry point of view. So once we've actually got the rail, the track form system in and the rail's been installed into the housing and we start to install further equipment, the kind of equipment we'll be looking at is finishing off the overhead line or what we call a rigid overhead conductor bar and that's what the, uh, provides the power through the pantographs into the trains. Equally there are other track based equipment or track side equipment that's associated with the signalling systems and antennas etc and tying into the, uh, the equipment that needs to be actually placed in the, in the track. Once we've got the rail system installed inside the tunnel itself, then what we'll be doing is connecting it to the surface network, so that's at South Kensington and South Yarra. What that does is that facilitates the ability to bring the HCMTs into the tunnel for the purposes of the dynamic testing. 